Uh, right, time for the first of our guests tonight. And they are going to be uh, many. A young man who knows what it's like to ride the big race winner on this weekend a few years ago. Now he's training them himself and some spectacular scenes uh, down at Wincanton just last Saturday with a family feel. Yes, it's Harry Deham who joins us on the line. Harry, how are things? Good, thanks, Alex. How are you doing? Yeah, good man. Not bad at all. Not bad. I uh, yeah. saw so your, your dad down at Taunton the other day with a big beaming smile and you, you're keeping your parents happy, you're keeping your granddad happy, it looks like you're keeping your staff happy. All must be well in the world. Yeah, it's all, it's all going well at the moment. Um, you know, had a had a good start. The horses so far have run well and um, yeah, to, to get a winner for mum and dad and, and then grandfather owned a share in a horse the other day it was a pretty cool start and in terms of where those horses are, are coming from obviously the the hunting the winner over christmas came from paul nichols this horse beyond temptation who we we saw just last weekend came from from ireland how how are the, how are they arriving into your yard uh ed bailey my my bloodstock agent actually sort of said that beyond redemption might be a good horse for for us and he was unsold in the ring at Doncaster in the summer and we we bought him um we bought him outside the ring after that and you know we we're basically just lacking um a few chasers we had quite a few hurdlers um and Ed just thought he might be a, a good chaser to go and have a bit of fun with he had a handicap mark and he was sort of ready to go having been in good form point to pointing in Ireland um so you know he's we we thought he was a decent buy at the time but until they go and run you never quite know but he he performed really well and in terms of how the team's lo looking and to what extent you actually have the luxury of, of picking and choosing at this early stage in your career what the team looks like in, in terms of the ammunition that you've got? Oh, we've got some nice horses for sure. Um, you know, Paul in my last season there, he was pretty good to me in the, in the sense that he, there were, there were a few horses. There's always a few horses every season that aren't quite making the grade, or, or you know, owners owners might have had enough of, or whatever it might be. And and I picked up a few horses like that, um, which, which was fantastic. And you know, obviously, I knew those horses well, so um, it was nice to have them. And then Ed and I have, you know, we've gone to the sales a bit this summer, and we've tried to, you know, pick up what we can. And you're obviously you're you're doing it on a budget, and some of the horses you're buying on spec, and that focuses the mind because once you've once you've bought the horses, you then have to go and sell them. So, um, you know, we've just tried to to build a team of horses that we thought we could go and you know go and have a bit of fun with, and um, try to try to fit our our sort of owners' budgets and requirements really. And in terms of the the actual team, in terms of personnel and and, and staff, what kind of directions and and, and where did they come from? Um, all over really. A couple of guys came from pools. Uh, Joe Rowe, great great friend of mine. He's he's come from pools with me. Uh, Rupert Wilkes, who's going to have his first amateur ride uh, for me next month, came. Uh, my head lad is a guy called Graham Baines, who um, just sent his CV in to me um, on an email one day in the summer, and you know we we met up in the summer and we sort of chatted about uh, what I wanted to do and and what I was trying to achieve and. Um, he's got a wealth of experience. You know, he's he's been in racing a long time, and he's probably forgotten more than I know in terms of horse care and management and feeding. And so he's been a he's been a fantastic um, help to me. And uh, my sister uh, Amy has has been an amazing help as well. She's basically <laughs> she's sort of running my office for me. And and she she sort of said when she started, what what is it exactly you want me to do? And I. I basically said to her, "Everything bar train the horses, please." And uh, <laughs> she she essentially is doing that. You know, she's she's been fantastic, and um, yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't certainly wouldn't be doing it without Amy. That's for sure. How does that feel? And it, it is very much early doors, and I, I know it always won't be like this, but early doors it has been a family affair, hasn't it? How does that feel? Yeah. It's, absolutely fantastic obviously because you you know I, I, I've worked in a I've worked for my family you know my uncle for the last 11 years and I I personally feel that you're going to be more invested because it's your family and you, you obviously want that thing to go well and do well because you you know you you feel more part of it and um Amy Amy being a part of it is, is a huge thing for me and also you know it, it's 
she had a really good career and was, was doing really well. And for her to say, no, actually, I want to come and be part of this and be involved in it was was a, a big thing for me. And I'm delighted she is. And, you know, mum and dad have, you know, they're obviously massive supporters and, and dad comes in and he potters around the yard and um, fixes a wheelbarrow or fixes a broom or whatever it needs to be. <laughs> and, um, yeah, that you know, obviously they've been an amazing help to me and I'm extremely grateful for all of them. And what's your mindset right now? Because it, limbo's the wrong word, but you you are kind of in between stages of the very early initial beginnings of your career. You're in Lambourne, I think, uh, pretty near Ed Walker's at, at the moment, but your new kind of purpose-built yard is on its way. So wh- where are you at with all of that, and where does that have you feeling and uh, about where you are, really, both kind of physically and mentally? Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm in uh, a Sheen Murphy's yard at the moment, which is at the back of, um, you, as you rightly say, Ed Walker's, um, who's been extremely welcoming since since I've arrived. Um, so I'm in a Sheen's yard at Frenchman's house. A Sheen's been great because at the time when I moved there, it was sort of a case of we might be there two months, we might be there six, we might be there a year. So he's been fantastic. Uh, him and Jimmy Derham, who who helps a Sheen out, they've been great. So big thanks to them. Um, and my yard, I suspect, my new yard in, in Boxford will, will be ready, I, I think, in the summer. So my, my thought and hope is that my horses will have their summer holidays um, and come in there in the sort of end of July. That would be my, my ideal. Um, obviously, you know, I, I would have wished to be there this season, but that wasn't the case. And I'm, I'm actually having a great time in Lambourn. You know, lots of people have been really, really kind and very welcoming. And um, so I'm very grateful to that. And to your other point, where where am I thinking? I'm I've basically thought, well, if I don't do a good job with the horses in Lambourne, then I'll have no horses to take to Boxford. So <laughs> I've just really focused on, you know, as soon as the horses move to Frenchman's um, from their summer holidays, I've basically just thought, right, my focus has to be these horses and just trying to do the best job I can and and train some winners and get some good results because ultimately you can have all the support in the world and and good team around you and good people, but um, you know, AP said to me, we were talking about it a while ago, and AP just said that the most important thing to do is win. Um, and you know, you've got to you've got to try and produce some results. So I've been really just focused on trying to get my horses to run their best and place them right. Which I feel like I've already made a couple of little mistakes, but you're you're going to learn all the time. And um, I'm just trying to trying to do my best with the horses that I've got. Really, what were those? If if you're at liberty to say. I just th- I just think a couple of horses I just ran in the wrong races. I yeah. I thought the ground was going to be a little bit too dry at Huntington for a horse called Game Winner. And when I walked it, I wish he was there. He finished second in a good Novice Hurdle Exeter, bumped into one of Harry Fry's, who was probably above average. And I thought a mare called Helen Claremont would go and win at Foss Lass. And I, I think I probably ran her on the wrong ground. She <laughs> she took one s- sort of step onto the mud and I don't think she liked it very much. But, the, you know, th- those are things that you're going to, you, you're going to do and you, as long as you're trying your best to make the right decisions and, and um, you know, mistakes are going to happen. I'm, I'm sure that Paul and Nicky and, and Dan and people like that still think, you know, God, I've made a bit of an error there. So I'm, I'm very aware that I'm going to make mistakes, but I, I just think as long as I can try and make the decisions as the, for the best reasons possible and the most thought out reasons, then, then hopefully I'll be doing okay. Pretty good start. And you're getting the winners. Um, you're employing the right people. And I, I'm, from a personal point of view, um, I'm, I'm quite pleased to see the association, association with Paul O'Brien, who's al- already ridden your horses, already provided you with winners as, as well. He's a, he's a, a hard-working, dedicated, uh, loyal and talented guy. I used to ride out with him down at, down at Charlie Longston's um, a few years ago as, as well. How did that partnership come around? I've... I would first of all say, Alex, I think you've summed him up brilliantly there. Um, I think hard-working, loyal, talented are, are um, perfect ways to describe him. Paul, uh, again, another conversation with Ed Bailey and I in the summer, and a guy called Tommy O'Brien, who's a very successful amateur jockey. We were, we were having a quite interesting Chinese meal in Ireland uh, at the Derby sale in the summer, and we were basically discussing um, a jockey who we thought was... Um, not tied down to a certain yard uh, who we thought was 
you know, really talented and, and might come and be involved in our team. And Paul was at the top of our list. And um, I've told this story a few times now, but not publicly. And basically said, this was in June. And I rang Paul about the prospect of just coming in and, you know, seeing how we got on. You know, I knew him from riding a little bit, but not, not well. Um, so he's a good stride there. Um, but, you know, I knew him a bit from riding, but not particularly well. And, and I just rang him and said, look, this is what I'm trying to do. This is what we're trying to achieve. We're, we're a young team that are ambitious and we want to, you know, start small and, and grow and hopefully do well. And um, would you like to be involved? And basically he said, you know, he'd love to be. And I spoke to his agent, Ian Popham, um, who's been big help already. And I said to Paul, look, the horses are coming in on the 7th of September. You'd, you'd be very welcome to, to come in whenever. And he rang me on the 6th of September. He told me I'll be in tomorrow. He was, and he's been in two days a week since. Um you know, just hard working guy comes in, gets to know the horses. Um, and about three weeks before I had my first runner, I just said to him, look, Paul, we seem to get on great. You, you know, you've, you've been, you've shown a lot of faith in me before I've even had a runner. Um, and I'm going to try and do the same for you. I've, I've spoken to the majority of my owners and said, look, you're going to ride for me. Um, and you know, all, all my owners are really supportive of him and that decision. And, um, you know, so far he's done a he's done a fantastic job, and I'm I'm really confident that he's going to keep doing that. Yeah, I'm so chuffed to see him because there's so many guys like him, or you could probably pick out or girls who you know who could go half a career without getting the opportunity that their talents and their efforts deserve, and he's getting them early on. So that's great to see. I'm really chuffed for for him. In terms of you as a jockey, you did actually before we do that, I just want to go back to the celebrations of your your granddad and uh, and others from from last weekend with Beyond Redemption as well. I mean, actually, in a way, it was it was almost a done deal, wasn't it? It was it was great watching them and and watching the race because really. Never say never in jump racing, but it was kind of in the bag from a long way out. Yeah, so a, a great friend of mine, Hannah Roche, who who is actually Paul's PA and have been a you know great member of staff of Paul's for a long time, was at Wing Canton, and his his great friends and mum and dad and my grandfather and Hannah actually filmed this. I was out the front doing quite similar to what my grandfather was doing. <laughs> uh, out the front, but Granddad own, owns a share, a tenth share in this horse. <laughs> Um, you know, Grandad, as well as my granddad, he's a great mate. We talk, we talk every morning at about seven a.m. Um, and we talk about the horses, and and we actually, the, the reason I was, you know, obviously it's fantastic to have a winner, but we we're having Sunday lunch about. I'm sure he won't mind me telling you this. We we're having Sunday lunch about six weeks before this race, and he said, "Where's my horse going to run?" And I said, "He's going to win Canton on the seventh, and he'll win." And you know. <laughs> obviously having a bit of a laugh and a joke and um he said oh well he's been off a long time about you 100 quid that you know you can't get him to win first time out i said yep yeah, you're on and so <laughs> i went in on the monday morning and i said to graham my head lad graham we must get this horse fit um <laughs> and in and in fairness i will say as well joe Rowe, who's a, a great m friend of mine who's who's come to work for me he's done a brilliant job with this horse because um he rode him out the first morning and he nearly fell off and they sort of didn't get on all that well. And I said, well, look, you're a big man. He's a big horse. Get to know him because you're going to be riding him. And um, he's done a superb job with him and, and he, he produced him absolutely beautifully for the day. Fantastic. Did he did he give you the honour? Oh, he did. Absolutely. He said he's never been so pleased to give anyone 100 quid in his life. <laughs> and I, I was absolutely delighted to receive it as well. <laughs> Beautiful. As me and my mates say, literally, in this situation, wade in Wing Canton. And it yeah, was absolutely. literally wade in <laughs> Wing Canton. Fantastic. The thing is, you've set a precedent now because saying it will win on this day, it makes it sound so easy. And both you and I know it's far from it. Well, yeah, but, the, you know, the, how often do you say it and it never happens, but you never hear <laughs> about those stories. But um, I think I learned a lot from Ditchett. Um, I learned an awful lot, but one thing was very clear all the way along with Paul was that he had a plan and that you'd be so often, you'd be stood on the hill in August and he'd say 23rd of October, there's a race for that horse. He'll win there. And more often than not, he did. And prime example of that was Brave Man's Game on an extra novice hurdle. I don't know, two years ago, was it? Yeah, probably two years ago. And he said to me, I'm going to win the King George with that horse. Um, so 
it is very important with all these horses, whatever level they are. And this was a not hundred novice handicap round win Canton, but you've got to have a plan, I think. And, um, you know, that gives you something to work back from. So I, I would suggest that hopefully I've learned that from Ditchett. Uh, one of the other things that I, I wouldn't say so much you've learned from Paul and from Ditcher, but maybe in part, I think it's, I think it's in part who you are as a person as well. You're a very good communicator. You used to write a blog when you were down there at Paul's as well. Has that, has that always been part of your makeup? Is it something you learn from from Paul? Because it sure is important, not just in this this game in your relationship with the media but it also with your your kind of staff your owners the job itself i think for your owners is the most important thing because um you know these people are supporting you and paying you you know a, a lot of money to have their horses with you and i think it's absolutely vital to communicate with them because if you don't and and they're sat at home and they're thinking I wonder what my horse is doing this week or I've not heard or anything like that I think it's very very important that you try to communicate with everyone and um, you know tell them what's going on because things aren't going to go right all the time a horse might have five or six runs in a season so that means there's a lot of downtime so if you can try and speak to them on a regular basis and I you know I've got lots of whatsapp groups for the syndicates that I have and try and speak to all my owners on a Sunday morning best I can um and yeah, I would say I learned that from Ditchett. Paul spends most of his morning on a Sunday morning talking to owners. And, you know, I could have rung him a quarter to ten on a Thursday night and wanted to talk about horses and he he would have happily done it. You know, I think you probably have to almost always be available to, to communicate to whoever it might be. And actually, if you're, if you're not, then someone else will be. Um, so I think you've just got to, you've got to try and put yourself out there best you can and, um, you know, hopefully positively promote what you're doing. And finally, one sentence answer to this one. In the in the spirit of forward planning, forward thinking, who'd have thought that nine years on from this weekend winning the Lanzarote, you'd be a fledgling young trainer? Yeah, it was um it was a good win. I I suppose Safi Dura was um he must have been about three stone well in for me to ride and win on it. <laughs> because any horse that I won on had a lot in hand. But um, yeah, he was he was a lovely horse. I, it was nice to ride winners for the Stewart family and Andy in particular, who was a massive, massive supporter of Paul. Um, it was always special to ride winners in those colours. And um, yeah, hopefully one day I'll try and win it as a trainer. Top man. Listen, we'll have to get you on again uh, in some time in due course. Great guest. Thanks for your time. Thanks very much, Alex. Cheers.